Alright guys, welcome back from our break. The last thing we did was install WordPress using quick install for free. So we can cross off this step. I've written out some more notes for you below, which we're going to cover once we log into WordPress. And the most important thing to say right now is that people always ask me what to do if they accidentally close their quick install window. And the answer is no big deal. The only important info here is admin area, username, and password, and all of this is sent to you in email. That's it. We can now close this window even though it's kind of a nice uh, sign of our progress. We really don't need it anymore. I'll open the inbox to show you that the quick install, install complete, was also sent to our email. And that's the same information right here. Just another email you want to keep forever. And if you don't see this, again, check your spam folder. Now we just want to log into WordPress for our first time and then we'll install the theme. So we want to click admin URL. If we click URL it'll just take us to the home page but we want the login link which is admin URL. And we of course want to copy our password. And then click that link. Alright, looks like WordPress is ready for us. So username, password, remember me and log in. But before I log in, I want to bookmark the login link. I just want to bookmark it in my blogger help folder so that this link is easy to find in the future. And if you did want to write it out, it's just yourdomainname.com forward slash wp admin. That's the screen we're on when we're on this screen. Now remember me and log in. Alright, so welcome to WordPress. WordPress has assembled some links to get you started. We're going to visit all these eventually though. And you get some nice features like WordPress News where you can click and check out Matt's blog. Matt's the founder of WordPress. So it's pretty personalized from the start. You can uh, hear from the founder and get to see what he's thinking. If you click on this home button in the upper left, you'll go to your home page as the world now sees it and it's live. Your site has the default theme of the moment and we're doing this in 2016. Therefore this theme is the default 2016 theme and it's made by the WordPress team. But of course we're going to change everything. So let's go ahead and do my favorite housekeeping activities which I've laid out for you guys to give you an easy time from the get-go. First, let's just navigate to users. It took me forever to find users when I first started using WordPress, but we want to modify our username. We want to modify ourselves, so just click your name, and now it's time to set up a new password. We can click generate password, and then generate something you're comfortable with. A little bit more about the user screen, you'll see that your username cannot be changed just a WordPress setting that's been that way forever although you can add new users easily if you want to add yourself as a new person and then delete the previous one you can do that you can also change your name and you can change how it's displayed publicly and make sure you get the right email in here because if you set up contact forms and different features of WordPress that use your email it's gonna to send to this email choose yourself a nice color scheme and then you're good to go now let's just click on settings and check out the settings area which is very important as our site gets bigger and bigger. And we should also right click on the home icon and open that in a new tab so we can see some changes. Let's change this site title and the tagline for starters. Just change it to comfy animal store and just another e-commerce site. Save and refresh. And there you go, so we're learning how to make basic changes to your WordPress site that actually show up live on the internet, which can feel good, especially if this is your first time editing WordPress. Again, we're doing this all very beginner friendly so we don't lose anyone. Next, if you want the www in front of your domain name, then you can add that here, but you also have to add it in site address. If you just add that www in one of these sections, WordPress address URL and not site address URL, your site will break. So heads up on that. And that's it for settings general, where it takes us when we click settings to gen 
And that's it for settings general, where it takes us when we just click settings. So let's click writing now. And there's nothing we really want to change here. So let's click reading. All right. And this page is actually really useful for front page displays, this top section. I don't think I've ever changed these lower sections on settings reading, but we do want to change front page displays. So let's do that right now because it actually shows us a really important first step, which is how to make a new page and how to use a new page and add content to it. And that page is going to be our home page, which I know a lot of people like designing at the start. So it should be fun. The default setting in WordPress is to have your front page, also known as your home page, display your latest posts. That just means that as you write more blog posts, they'll stack on the home page. And so right now we get the default post that WordPress made for us with one default comment from Mr. WordPress. But if you want your site to look like something other than a blog, the first step is to make an actual front page and then click a static page and select that page that we make. I kid you not guys, you really are using the same software and the same platform that all these other amazing websites were started on that celebrities use to sell music and huge events use to sell tickets and huge businesses use to conduct their business. And the first step is often just making this new page. So just leave front page displays on your latest post for now and follow me to new page. This is the new page editor, which looks a lot like the blog post editor. Just a few different settings on the sidebar. And type in front page in the title bar. We're actually going to leave this page blank. And we're just going to click publish. We're still in the housekeeping section, by the way. We can view this page if you want to see what a blank page looks like. Just a blank WordPress page where we can write in some text. But for now, we want to go back to the dashboard, click Settings, Reading, back to this section, and now click a static page and select below from front page, front page. All right, so we're using titles and labels that make sense. And just click Save Pages. Now our home page won't display the post, it will display a page that we can edit and fill in with awesome content like our hero image and our buttons and all that good stuff. Great job guys, and the last housekeeping step I wanna do before we install our theme is in settings, permalinks. In this section, just choose post name. And that's so that we don't have a date in every link for our blog. We don't want day and name in our links on our blog because that will outdate them from the moment we publish them and Google likes seeing fresh content. And now just click on plugins where we're gonna learn how to manage and install plugins on our new website. From the screen you can manage plugins, you can click activate or delete things and at the moment we want to activate Akismet, the spam protector and activate Hello Dolly just because that's a timeless plugin made by the founder of WordPress and I like the little quote it gives us in the upper right screen but that's all this plugin does, it just gives us a quote. The first plugin we want to install is free from the WordPress directory like so many plugins are and we can just click add new. We see some of the best free WordPress plugins on this page that we can play around with later but for now just do a search in the upper right for WP install profiles and click enter. On this results page, we'll see a lot of plugins, and usually the one we want is in the upper left corner, if we got the search right, and search for the right name. And we did. This is the plugin we want, because I recognize the thumbnail and the author. So just click install now. And we're going to install the first plugin onto our site from the WordPress directory. It's amazing how that all happens automatically, because everything's connected online. And because with WordPress.org, we have access to all these directories and things that people built. All right, it's important to note now that when you install and activate a new plugin, you'll get a new settings option. And sometimes that's available in settings. In this case, it's not. 
and sometimes you get a new link under plugins. In this case, we do. The reason I love this installation profiles plugin so much is because it lets us install a whole set of plugins that could be used to make a hotel site or a fashion site or a niche website or a business site or a profile site or whatever someone has made. And in this case, I've bundled together all of the best plugins I could find for an e-commerce website. In other words, what we're doing is installing every single plugin powering our demo website so that you can make these features come to life on your own e-commerce website. But remember that because a plugin is just an extension of your WordPress software, sort of like a software upgrade, that you won't see visual changes right away on your demo website. What you will see are more sections to add stuff to your website, which will appear in the left hand column over here. And that way we can just go in and build different parts of our website in a logical web design flow. And like I said, hopefully it'll save us time. This is the kind of stuff, by the way, that web developers actually do charge you thousands of dollars for. And I don't mean to scare you, but your list of plugins is going to go from 3 to about 10 to 20 because our site's going to get a lot more powerful and it's going to be able to do all the stuff that our demo website can do. So that's pretty cool overall. Just click on bulk install profiles now. And this list doesn't matter because we have our own list. We can delete that text. And now we can click import profiles. All right, at this point, you need to pause the video and go to the video notes right below it on YouTube and just click that show more button, which will open up the video notes where I'm gonna have some sort of link to everything we're covering in this video and to every file and piece of information that I can't put inside the video. I'm going to link you on the All right, and at this point I want you to pause the video and in the video notes section below, just click that show more button to open up the video notes completely where you're going to find a link to all the stuff in the video, all the files and the text and little pieces of this and that that I can't actually give you via a video. You're going to find that in a link and it's going to look something like this in terms of the link. It's going to go to Dear Blogger, my main blog, and it's just going to be a bunch of useful stuff, hopefully organized uh, a little bit better for you. But what you want to find right now is where it says ecommerce-bundle.profile and just click that and I'll have some more directions for each section that you can follow along with, um, along with what's covered in the video. So I think this will work well, but let me know in the comments if you have any questions. And to proceed right now, we just need to click e-commerce bundle.profile. That will download a .zip file we need to your downloads. So wherever you find your downloads, just open that folder. I'm obviously using Mac, so I'm using Finder, and I'm going to click on Downloads. And once you find e-commerce bundle profile zip, just double click this file. And that will open up the file we actually want, which is a .profile file, not the .zip file. Next, we're going to follow these little directions written out right here on our notes page and come over to the import profile section. Interestingly enough, you need to move this file from your downloads to the desktop to use it. So just do that one additional step. And then back in your WordPress, in Import Profiles, click Choose File. And then click Desktop and find that file. And once you've found it, just double click. And then click Upload. Great work. Now in Choose a Profile, we should have our new e-commerce bundle, so choose that and we'll get the exact list of plugins that we're going to use on our website. So now we just want to click download plugins and save profile. And one by one WordPress will pull in the plugins for your WordPress site from the directory all for free. All right, 
great, great work. Everything was successful. And don't worry about these two couldn't finds at the bottom because I'm going to show you how to find and install those plugins individually. To see the work we did, just go to plugins now. And our list is looking great. Our website instantly just became more powerful than about 50% of e-commerce websites out there. And what we need to do to complete this step is click this upper plugin box to select all and then bulk activate and click apply. Excellent. You might get some pop-outs announcing that a plugin like wishlist was activated, so just dismiss those. And make sure you have that blue bar going from top to bottom on all of our plugins. You should now have 14 plugins in total installed and activated on your website. You'll know it's activated by this light blue background here. And if you don't see one of these titles in your list, then you can also manually add it by clicking add new and doing a search for something that you saw on my screen but didn't see on yours.